Come, Sasha. Sasha, come. A typically crisp and clear Canadian morning. Good morning. My name is Cameron Kozan. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Chemical Vapor Metal Refining Inc., which happens to be a mouthful, so we use the acronym CVMR. We are in the business of anticipating the need of uh, metal refining and metal producing companies and fulfilling that need. Uh, we have a mandate uh, within our corporation to produce cost-effective, environmentally friendly, and uh, low energy consuming technology to fulfill the future need of this uh, industry. So far, we have been able to do that with great accolade. Uh, the number and the magnitude of our clients is to our credit in that respect. Innovation and invention cannot happen in a vacuum. You either have the client knocking at your door and saying, this is what I need, or you have to anticipate the industry's requirements into the future and develop a technology to fulfill that before the need arises. This has been the biggest challenge for us in the past 20 years that we've been in existence. And I presume this has been the challenge historically from times immemorial when man started innovating, or should I say human beings, started innovating and inventing new tools. CVMR has been uh, operating at this location uh, for almost 20 years now. And as you can see, this is a semi-residential, light industrial zone north of Toronto. When a client comes to our offices, they appreciate the fact that we are only 20 minutes away from the airport. Our technology does not produce any pollutants and is not considered hazardous by the authorities. We are proud of this fact. Our head office is in Toronto, but we have offices now in Germany, in Russia, in Singapore, in China, in Macau, and uh, not to forget, of course, United States of America. But most of the development, most of the technological development and innovations come out of this office here in Toronto. If we can imagine an ore material coming out of the ground, we look for one or a number of metals embedded in that ore body. For the sake of simplicity, we vaporize the metal that we are after chemically. Among them, the most popular are nickel, cobalt, 
platinum group of metals, molybdenum, tantalum, and others. We transfer the metal vapor to a separate chamber where we extract the pure metal that we have targeted in all sorts of forms, from metal powder to metal foams to net shapes and any other form that our clients wish to have. And this whole operation is done in one very simple streamlined process. And to my knowledge, we are the only ones in the world uh, that produce this technology today. In this barrel, we have unpure nickel in powdery form. We're gonna take this barrel, we put it in the reactor, and then we refine nickel as a gas to pure nickel powder. This is the enclosure that houses the main components of our refining process. What you see here in this place is a small demonstration plant. We use this plant for testing various feed materials. Each client's ore material can vary in important ways. So it is sampled and analyzed in order to custom design the process to the client's needs. This system operates under atmospheric conditions with no pressure. The ore or feed material is then loaded into the reactor and the system is secured. Now the reactor is filled uh, with uh, feed material sealed and ready for pressure test. So I'm going to put some nitrogen flow in there. So the nitrogen flow is going to come through this line. Then you monitor the pressure here. To run one of our plants, you basically need one or two monitors and those monitors can be anywhere in the world because it's monitored on a computer and one or two people on the ground. So with four people, you can manage refining tons of material today. This is the, the heart of our process. This is reactor. This particular reactor is upright reactor and downflow of carbonyl monoxide. We are forming nickel carbonyl and concentration of this nickel carbonyl we can monitor through these windows connecting UV cells. After a reactor, we are transferring uh, through a preheated piping nickel carbonyl uh, into powder decomposer. Powder decomposer is designed as a pressure vessel and it's preheated to certain temperature and when carbonyl is coming in through the top it forms uh, nickel powder and carbon monoxide. We are decontaminating this powder and then we can put it in a barrel. Our system can produce various lines of products simultaneously. These can be depositions in various shapes, meeting the needs of various industries. Dr. Walter Kerlick. Pretty interesting in chemistry. When you use carbon monoxide as the working gas, it reacts with the solid nickel, forms a nickel gas, 
that decomposes and the CO is used over again. So the CO just keeps going round and round. I'm proud to say that on average, once a month, on average, uh, we have a new invention or a new development coming out of this office. Most of our inventions are patented under CBMR's name worldwide. And the ones that we think should not be patented because the, uh, there might be a competition out there that might imitate it, uh, we keep secret to ourselves. In my opinion, you cannot be innovative unless the atmosphere and the structure of the corporation that you work within is itself innovative and new. The hierarchies that are normal in other organizations do not exist here. Our people have to look forward to coming to their offices. They have to feel comfortable here when they are here. And they have to be able to criticize one another without stepping on each other's toes and or infringing on each other's scientific egos. It's a very relaxed environment. It's very informal. It's a great party to come to this office. And it is never boring because we never discuss the same things twice. CVMR has, has become an expert company in vapor plating. That is plating with a gas, a nickel gas, to produce a very fine plate on various objects for industry. This is our PLC system. You can see the channels are controlling different uh, process instruments. So overall, this one controls the process. Every member of this organization come from all sorts of walks of life with various experiences. Today we have uh, some 46 engineers and consultants working with us. But we choose people that fit in and that can contribute and think outside the box. I was born up in Sudbury and I started to work in the smelter at age 15. Uh, spent working for Inco until uh, 1997. My last little job was president of Goro Nickel. I spent three years in New Caledonia, uh, setting the ground for the big nickel project that's currently being built there. CVMR hired me as a consultant to work as project manager on a project that they've undertaken for building a large pilot plant, sometimes people call it a demonstration plant, for a client in China. The idea is to coordinate the work of CDMR's own engineers uh, with outside engineering companies. There's a matter of also coordinating with the fabricators and with mechanical construction people and eventually to commission the plant when it's uh, delivered to China. CDMR is uh, working with technology that you could say is simple yet sophisticated. It does several things at the same time. It will extract nickel from a crude material that may contain, uh, that usually contains some copper, cobalt, iron, sulfur. It'll extract the nickel in very clean, refined form. So two things happen at the same time. Nickel is extracted from this, what you can call crude material, into a very refined form, all in one step. Now well, that's unique, and yet that's sophisticated.
The process is under constant review, customizing the process, planning a demonstration facility in China, and many other complex undertakings. CVMR对中国客户服务的负责人，在中国，CVMR与各个不同的省份之间，其中包括十八个主要的集团公司，拥有广阔真诚的合作关系。这里包括中国著名的东北大学和深圳大学。我们非常自豪，在中国，我们与
Here, scientists are studying them on their way through this ball of heavy water. You can see a lot of the plumbing associated with getting the light and heavy water to the detector. Uh, if, if they can be shown to have a mass, this, uh, this would alter our understanding of our universe, the very <laughs> fabric of our existence. CVMR was commissioned to supply the nickel tubes used in the construction of this geodesic sphere. The Sudbury Neutrino Observatory was built at an approximate cost of three and a half billion US dollars with collaboration of scientists from Canada, United States, and United Kingdom. CVMR and its subsidiary CVD Manufacturing are suppliers to the project and along with US Department of Energy, Atomic Energy of Canada, Ontario Hydro, and Los Alamos Laboratories, we are proud to be sponsors of this project. Design engineer Miro Milinkovic. This represents a special reactor to produce unique nickel cubes that are used in the Sudbury Neutrino Observatory. The requirements on our production facility and the process were extraordinary. The geometry of the tube, the wall thickness variation had to be kept to below one thousandth of an inch as measured at any point on the surface of the tube. In addition to that, the nickel purity uh, defies the normal engineering measuring methods. You can see a couple of the tubes facing this way. There to get Only CVMR could do such a project because the facility, the process, uh, was available at this point in time. Our process produces the purest metals known to man today, I'm proud to say. The SNOW project, NASA, and all the other laboratories that have tested our products, especially our nickel, uh, have reported this in writing, which we have in our stores and uh, advertised on our website, uh, that our nickel is as pure as it can be, 99.999 percent pure. We are associated with a number of major corporations like Norilsk, uh, Russian Atomic Energy, Department of Energy in the US, Department of Defense in Canada, and we enjoy their engineers and scientists input. One of the most important things that our technologies do is decontaminate contaminated metals of various kinds. We do this for the Department of Energy in the United States. We do this for the government of Russia with contaminated metals. And we hope to be able to do it for various European and um, Far Eastern countries that have reservoirs of contaminated metals sitting all over the place. The same technology, the same procedures can be used for recycling of metals, whether they're contaminated or not. From the computers to batteries to um, uh, contaminated metals to submarines that have been contaminated by uranium. We can decontaminate all of these through this one process. Smelting has traditionally used vast amounts of energy and created toxic waste. In a world of dwindling natural resources and concerns for the environment, this price is too high. Our technology uses uh, very low energy. It's hermetically sealed. 
CVMR's process operates at relatively low temperatures. No toxic slag is produced. The residue from our process leaves the ore body unchanged except for the removal of the specific metals. It is as environmentally neutral as possible. We require very stringent regulatory bodies to be satisfied wherever we have our factories, and we do satisfy them very quickly in the United States, in Canada, in Norway, in Russia. In fact, in Germany, the most difficult regulatory agency, TÜV, gave us a permit in two months, which is unheard of. Our process does not contaminate anything, and it's environmentally absolutely safe. We've been in this place operating for 20 years. We have not had a single accident to date, and we don't intend to have one ever in the future. Now, this is a safety device. It's called thermal oxidizer. It's designed to burn all process contaminated gases. Even in the case of an airplane, God forbid, hitting into our building, uh, we have processes that prevent leakage of any gases or any contaminants into the air. have to think ahead. That's the mark of a technology developing corporation. We have to stay ahead of the current technologies that come from all walks of life that affect what we do. Collate relevant technologies and try to look at applications that have not yet uh, come to fruition, such as uh, mining uh, asteroids. We are currently in our shop developing technology and equipment that we can send to an asteroid for mining purposes. These little equipment can land on the asteroid, and by little I mean the size of my desk here. Land on an asteroid, mine the asteroid for the metal that we are after, and refine that metal, and in situ, manufacture equipment that can be used on that asteroid or shipped to another asteroid or some other environment. They don't have to bring the refined metal necessarily back to Earth to be manufactured and sent back. We at the very elementary levels today can do that here in our laboratories and we are hoping that in uh, in conjunction with NASA and other organizations, uh, we can develop this technology to its fullest extent very soon.